Physicist and Harvard professor Avi Loeb says there's a possibility humans aren't the only civilization in the universe. Whether we live in such a reality or not is not a philosophical question. We just have to look out. Loeb teamed up with the Pentagon office that investigates unidentified aerial phenomenon, and they released this draft report that indicates it is possible that alien ships have already visited our solar system. Specifically, Loeb thinks the first interstellar object spotted passing through our solar system in 2017 that was given the name Oumuamua could be an extraterrestrial mothership. Loeb says Oumuamua didn't have the characteristics you'd find in meteors or other known objects. We consider a possibility where an object as big as Oumuamua, which was a um, football field size, uh, is a mothership. He says the mothership could have released smaller ships or probes to study our solar system after spending a long time to get here. With chemical rockets, it takes less than a billion years to traverse the entire Milky Way galaxy. Loeb says if Oumuamua was a ship, there likely wasn't life on it. Instead, he believes it could have been operated by artificial intelligence an artificial intelligence system that uh, stays dormant for that period and just gets activated when it comes close to its target. All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And as you just saw, the devil is all over the place and continues to bug out the closer and closer he gets to the end of his rulership. As the scriptures say, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. OK, and the scriptures tells you how he was going to come down with great wrath. All right. Because he knew he had but a short time and we're living in those times. The scriptures talks about. How Satan, after he was loosed out of his prison, you know, and that's uh, the history of the Renaissance, would um, be loosed for a little season and go out and just push nothing but deception up into the time of Armageddon, which is World War Three. That's going to be headed, all right, by uh, Gog and Magog and so forth, which we always go into those things. But today... Um, I was going to do a lesson going into uh, Habakkuk, the third chapter, you know, in which Habakkuk saw a vision of the chariot invasion. All right. The chariots invading, you know, um, the world, you know, um, taking down Babylon, the great and the chaotic scene. All right. That's uh, associated with the uh, second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And we're going to get that. You know, but um, as I uh, had the thought to do that uh, lesson, you know, I ran across this lesson um, uploaded by the uh, priest Amawanga Bar, GMS Awakening 144 Ha. All right, Amawanga Bar. All right, uh, subscribe. All right, to the brother's page and be edified constantly. Now, um, as you can see, the title of this video, A Time of Great Deception in a so-called alien mothership in our solar system, okay? Which we know these devils are watching the videos. They're seeing, you know, the uh, great awakening of the Hebrew Israelites, um, you know, which they're sending their little minions to try to stop it and discredit it and push doubt, you know. But um, these devils are worried. And we know that these devils are um, big on controlling the narrative, which they're losing control of the narrative, all right, via the truth coming out, because what what keeps this system going is lies. As a matter of fact, let's get the uh, book of uh, Second Edris, the sixth chapter. Second Edris, the sixth chapter. All right, the faith of the Israelites. All right, the testimony that we have under the blood of Yahweh Shai. All right, is our means of overcoming. All right, this is the book of Second Edris, chapter six and twenty-seven. As a matter of fact, 
I'll start at 25. It says, whosoever remaineth from all these things that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation in the end of your world. Okay, in the end of what world? <laughs> when we go earlier in this chapter, okay, it tells you what? Second entry 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay, and we're living in a time where great prophecies are coming to pass, you know, and these devils are operating, all right, um, in some high-level fear, but they're trying to promote it as if they got everything under control and they got the breakdown, you see? And we're living in these times, okay? It says, and the men that are received shall see it, and we know the remnant are going to be the ones that escape, all right, all of these uh, crazy things that's coming to the earth. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth, meaning they were chosen from the foundation of the earth to get the victory. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. And you can see that happening now as the devil has not stopped. Okay, every week he got something, you know, uh, some sort of deception and mischief going on. You know, and, uh, and people are uh, worried. People are scared. People, you know, especially what's going on with the banks, what's going on with the food, you know, inflation. That's all a result of prophecy coming to pass. It says, for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. Okay, the water of the word is putting out. Okay, the fiery darts of Satan and all of his lies. All right, pseudoscience, corruption, deception. All right, the force of the sword is what has forwarded Esau up until this point. Okay, as for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. You see that? And that's what's happening because we know these devils, okay, have for a long time been able to push blasphemy, all right, of what those chariots are, okay? Leave it up to these devils. You know, when you think of so-called UFOs, all right, um, you think of aliens, you know, big-eyed, you know, uh, creatures, you know, blinking and, you know, hands too big for their body, feet too big for their body, green you know, which is it was which is blasphemy. That's that's a lie. This is uh the book of Revelation, the thirteenth chapter and the sixth verse, and it says, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against the most high to blaspheme his name, okay, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. So he blasphemed the name of the most high, his reputation, his memorial, okay, his his actual name. All right, and his only begotten son and his tabernacle, which the tabernacle of the most high are the Israelites, where his truth dwells, where he sends the Holy Spirit down. He blasphemed us via pseudoscience and all of the other various different things he's done to push and promote who we really are. And them that dwell in heaven. OK, so he's blasphemed the truth. <laughs> OK, he's blas he He's the one who's, who's truly blaspheming the Holy Spirit. OK, he's even saying there is no God. OK, and, you know, if there was one. All right. He has the power and the means on the left hand side to overcome that God. OK, even if that God happens to bring bring uh, plagues, you know, he has the technology. All right. To overcome the plagues that are brought on by the most high. And then he says the son of the most high is fake news. But as you can see here. And them that dwell in heaven. So for so long, this devil has been able to uh, lie and promote mischief and falsehoods about what those chariots really are. All right. And now we're living in a time where they're openly on the news telling you, all right, that the Pentagon sees so-called UFOs all the time. All right. Um, they release particular documents, you know, particular uh, pilots. All right, are coming out saying that they they were, you know, told, you know, if they told what they saw, all right, they can be held accountable, all right? And ultimately, they're trying to uh, basically control the narrative of uh, what these vehicles are, all right, which there are vehicles in the heavens, okay? Just like man has been granted, you know, uh, power to uh, create vehicles, well, the scriptures speaks about chariots, 
All right. The Hebrew word for chariot is makarab. All right. Or marakab or rakab. As a matter of fact, when we get Habakkuk, the third chapter. OK, as we'll show you, the most high gave Habakkuk a vision of those chariots invading the earth. And we're going to show you that chaotic scene. All right. That Habakkuk saw, which is associated with what? The deliverance of his people. OK. And Esau doesn't have the breakdown and he sees us. OK. He sees us out preaching, prophesying. OK. He, he hears the message. All right. Now, all of a sudden, the Pentagon officials are claiming there's an alien mothership, which there's no such thing as a mothership. It's a fathership. All right. And when you get the book of and ultimately is a chariot that. The heavenly father is going to send, all right, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ back on, all right? And it's associated with a white horse, you know, a cloud, and various other things in the scriptures, all right? When you get Revelation, the seventh chapter, let's get that real quick. Revelation, the uh, seventh chapter. Give me one second. This is Revelation, not Revelation, the seven chapter Salakia, Revelation one and seven. But that's the deliverance of his people in Revelation seven. <laughs> All right. Revelation one and seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds. OK, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. That's how the Lord is going to return. He's going to come in the clouds in the sky. All right. But the clouds in the Bible all right. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Psalms 104, I believe. Let's get that to show you. It says he cometh with clouds. Let's go back. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. All right. And they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so among. And there's various other scriptures that 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 gives you the uh, chaotic, you know, um, scene of how the heavenly father is going to send his son back to gather the elect and to destroy Babylon, the great in particular parts of the earth. OK, I am the alpha and omega, the beginning and ending. All right. <laughs> Saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the almighty. See, and that's who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Now they've promoted him as this all loving, you know, soft, you know, carefree individual that just allows people to do what the hell they want to do. But when you go into the Bible, his second coming is associated with, you know, a, a terrible, chaotic, devastating scene. All right. Now this is the book of Psalms 104. And three, it says, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters and maketh his and maketh the clouds his chariot who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. And those angels, all right, inhabit those chariots. Now, when you look up this word chariot in the Hebrew. OK. Ra -ka -wab, Ra -ka -wab, all right chariot or the root word is rakab all right rakab see to mount and ride okay ride to mount ride sit or ride who's sitting there who's riding it all right is it just speaking of just a regular cloud no, the, 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 see, again, the Bible was highly symbolic. And this is what the, the Lord did that to bug people out. All right. And as we bring out this doctrine, he wants people to look at it and say, what? It's supposed to sound crazy. You see, but what was it that the Lord sent to deliver the children of Israel out of the first Egypt? He sent his only begotten son, his angel. All right. In the form of a pillar all right, a cloud by day, okay, and a pillar of fire by night, okay. 
see if we can get that real quick. And what was that for you, uh, you know, uh, you people who say you believe in the Bible? What exactly was that? Exodus 13 and 21. And the Lord Yahweh went before them via his angel. According to the story, all we have to do is go into it. It wasn't Yahweh himself in the chariot, but when you go into the story, he sent his angel, but it was through his authority. And this is why you have to understand ancient uh, uh, terminology and, and ways of writing and thinking. When a king sent someone out, it was him who got the, uh, like if a king sent people out to war and they won a war, it was the king that got, okay, um, credit for that victory. But it was his men who went out and got the victory for him. See? And the most high is king. And he's going to send his only begotten son just as he sent in Egypt. Okay? In an even greater fashion this time. The Lord went before them. All right? By day in a pillar of cloud. To lead them. To lead them the way. And by night a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. See that? <laughs> and, and see the heathen had heard of that great and terrible power. Numbers 14 and 14. And, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Yahweh, art among his people. That thou, Yahweh, art seen face to face. And that thy cloud standeth over them. And thou, thou, that thou goest before them by day time in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. There you go. All right. And we can go into various other scriptures. But um, but that was a chariot. You see that? Mount, ride, sit, rider, to cause to ride, to cause to ride upon, to put horseback. And the chariots are also likened unto horses. In the scriptures, it talks about Yahweh Shai returning on a white horse. Okay? So this is speaking of the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You see? And these devils hear the message. Now they want to put this information out here as if they, you know, uh, got the breakdown and control the narrative. Now the Pentagon is talking about an uh, alien mothership. Which the book of uh, Second Edges, the thirteenth chapter, real quick. Second Edges, the thirteenth chapter. Okay, speaks about when Yahweh shall return. Okay. As a matter of fact, Second Edges, chapter thirteen and one, and it came to pass after seven days I dreamed. They dreamed by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea. That it moved all the waves thereof, and be and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Because what they're saying in this uh particular situation with the Pentagon, okay, is that a mothership, a big gigantic mothership, okay, is sending other little UFOs into the earth. See? Showing you they're watching us. Okay, they're watching what we're saying. All right, they're 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 afraid. Okay, they're they're trying to hurry up and establish their new world order. They're trying to push fear on the people, as you saw, all right, a couple of weeks ago. They were talking about there's unidentified objects in the sky, and we shot them down, but we can't find them. All right, literally, they have not stopped since 2020. They even before then they didn't stop, but it's becoming more and more uh, evident. All right. That these devils are up to something. Okay, here it is right here. The, the, the Pentagon official suggests alien mothership in our solar system could send many probes to the earth. Okay, well the scriptures talks about how Yah when Yahweh shall return, he's going to have angels with him, chariots with him. Okay, let's get that in the book of uh, Revelation, the uh, 19th chapter. Okay. I just did a lesson on this chapter. All right. But Revelation, the 19th chapter. Okay. Which gives you another. It's another vision of an invasion of Yahweh Shai. 
all right? The coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, okay? Revelation 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open because what? He's coming out of the skies. He's coming in the clouds. And I beheld a white horse, and he that sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. This is what he's coming to do. He's coming to judge and make war. All right. And that that marks the end of Esau's world. You see, when 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 that chariot, when that great gigantic chariot returns with the uh, other chariots following him. All right. Now, as you keep reading here. In verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. This is the Lord's army. See that? This is the Lord's army. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he should rule them with the rod of iron. Because this second coming is going to lead to you heathen all right, being taken down. Babylon is going to be destroyed. Other parts of the earth are going to be in chaos and destroyed as well. All right. But uh, the 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 the, the uh, elites are going to flee into the bunker. Not everybody's going to die. All right. So he's coming to set up a righteous kingdom. And the beginning of it is that second coming in which the elect are going to be called into the, 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 the skies. The scriptures talks about how it says, come up hither. All right. And when we eventually come back down, however long that takes in earthly years, because we're going to be crowned and have our family reunion and you know jake all right we ain't gonna it ain't gonna be you know that reunion ain't gonna be short in earthly times who knows how long it's gonna take but eventually we come down and we're gonna rule you heathen with a rod of iron you see but as you can see it says the armies of heaven followed him that's why the most high is called the lord of host okay because this is his host his host is Yahweh Shai and the angels. Okay, the Lord of hosts. Hold up, Lord of hosts. Let me just type it in like that. Let's see here. The Lord of hosts. was an S at the end of it. Right. The Lord of hosts. All right. You see that? The Lord of hosts. And, and when you look up this word host, all right, so, Psalms 46 and 7, the Lord, Yahweh of hosts is with us. Let's look up this word host. Who are the host? The angels. And that's what's going to come back to take you devils down. Okay, the word for host is uh, Tazaba, Tazaba, okay, that which goes forth army, war, warfare, host, army, organized army, host of angels, there you go. So the angels are going to come back <laughs> in a glorious fashion to take you devils down, man. Okay, second Edris chapter 13, and I'm going to just jump to the point. Let's see here. Second Edris chapter 13 and 2, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves. So <coughs> like <coughs> all the waves thereof, and I beheld, and lo, that man, all right, what man? All right. When you read later in this chapter, it tells you that man was the son of the most high. OK, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. OK. <laughs> and this, my son, is going to be the son of the most high that's going to be re rebuked the wicked. All right. His son is going to be declared. See, this is speaking of his son, the son, the son of the most high. Okay, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay. It says, And lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, 
And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. And like the earth uh, fell it when it flee it, when it filled it the fire. So he's going to come back shooting fire out of those chariots. Okay. Uh, uh, thus saith Isaiah, the 65th chapter. See, but when I beheld and lo, as a matter of fact, let me read verse five. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea, which is why you constantly hear about the space force, because these nations are going to try to fight the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Esau himself has the sixth. All right. Um, facet of his uh, military, which is the uh, the uh, space military. You see. <laughs> Let's see here. Yep, the Space Force, the sixth branch of the military. See? The United States Space Force, and it, it is the spirit that that's the sixth, because that's the number associated with this man, the sixth branch of military. Okay? And ultimately, <laughs> when you read about the Space Force, okay, let's just type in Dragon. They have a section of it called the Dragon. Okay, SpaceX Dragon ship arrives, yada, yada, yada. SpaceX Dragon, SpaceX Cargo Dragon, a dragon. And they recently doing something with that thing. But how, how ironic that this is called Dragon. Okay. <laughs> The SpaceX force, the dragon is in the scriptures tell you, OK, that in the latter days. The dragon. Revelation 12 and 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon, OK, which is the ancient Roman Empire being revived. How do we know that when you read earlier in this chapter, the dragon, which is a red dragon, OK, tries to cut off the messiah okay and that's herod all right who's synonymous with the uh, ancient roman empire as he was a joint heir with them okay uh, herod the idumean the edomite okay they tried to to, to to cut off the messiah okay he tried to cut off the messiah who was to come and rule all nations with the rod of iron see so he's going to if if he tried to cut off the Messiah then at his birth so that he wouldn't grow up and be a sacrifice. What in the hell you think this devil going to do when he returns on that chariot? He tried to cut him off when he came into the earth. All right. Through the loins and lineages of David. OK. The lamb. Right. And when he comes. All right. In his angelic. All right. Body. All right. On that angelic vehicle, because he came on a, you know, eventually when he was, you know, when he came, he came on a donkey. He came lowly. OK. When he came into Jerusalem and, you know, you know, that which fulfilled Zechariah nine and nine. OK. Solomon came on a mule, but Yahweh shy. OK. When he returns in his angelic force, he's coming back for war, as we've been reading. So there's going to be a war in heaven. All right. And you got two weirdos talking about this is talking about an argument or a debate in the heavens. No, this is war. Literally, uh, the the uh, the powers that be along with the other nations that are at war are going to fight the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. OK. And they prevailed not, neither was any place found anymore in heaven. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, Esau's rulership being taken away. He was cast out into the earth, meaning he was fallen from his great estate, his rulership, and his angels were cast out with him. All right? His angels is his technology. 
okay, and everything he's been blessed with and boasting on the left hand side. See, and and I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, "Now has come salvation and the strength." In the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointed for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which did accuse them before our God day and night. You see that? So he was cast down. All right. The accuser of our brethren, man, who accuse us every damn day. OK, so when when Yahweh returns. OK, the scriptures talks about how the dragon is going to fight against him. And that's what this is speaking of here in verse five. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So they're going to fight the second coming of who the world England calls Jesus Christ. OK. As a matter of fact. Verse 32 as he's breaking down this vision, you have to read this whole chapter. We have lessons on it. And the time shall uh, be when these things shall come to pass and the signs which shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then my uh, shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle that they have against one another. And in an innumerable multitude, shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. And then, but he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion. All right. Literally, he's going to be delivering us as this, this, this destruction is going on. Okay. And Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men being prepared and build it. Like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. That's that chariot. We're going to be built up. We're going to be beamed up. And changed into our new estate. All right. And that's why it says in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. All right. And then we'll get into Habakkuk. Revelation, the 11th chapter. Let's get that real quick. Revelation, the 11th chapter. And the 11th verse, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell on them, which saw them. And that great fear is upon these devils. That's why they're now trying to, you know, uh, put the chariots out there and control the narrative. And, and most likely they're going to come with some fake uh, invasion. Some some project blue beam left hand, you know, alien invasion. All right. To help further, you know, the uh, order out of chaos scenario. OK, so after we will wake up and they saw us, they will be scared. All right. And verse 12 says this. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended in, up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. See, they're going to see us, not this secret you know, uh, deliverance that they talk about with the rapture where nobody's going to see the uh, the elect be beamed up. OK, no, the, 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 everybody's going to see it. OK, the enemies are going to be behold us being brought up into that chariot. And in the same hour, there was a great earthquake, which is that destruction. All right. So let's uh, get the book of uh, Habakkuk, the uh, third chapter. As. There's a vision of this great invasion. Okay. Again, uh, uh, Isaiah 31 says what? As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. That's our defense. Okay. The defense that we're going to have, okay, is the chariots. Something from a whole nother world, a whole nother uh, uh, heaven. <laughs> You see, Habakkuk 3 and 1, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shiganoth. All right. The Lord, oh, Lord, I have heard thy speech because he got this vision. Because when you read this book, Habakkuk was asking the Lord, when is he going to end all of this hell? When is he going to end injustice? When is he going to take the heathen down? OK, and at that time, you know, the uh, 
the uh, Babylonians, the Chaldeans, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, the, those Assyrians, they pretty much, you know, were ruling and, you know, were doing evil. OK, but the Lord gave him a vision of how he's going to take down the modern day Chaldeans. That's when it's all going to end. The end of our captivity and the end of injustice in the earth comes through Esau's fall. So that's the vision that he's getting. That's the reason he's uh, 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 receiving his vision. All right. In the previous chapter, remember, it says, all right, write this vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Okay, though it tarry, wait for it because it shall surely come. And in this chapter, he describes, all right, the biblical Edomites and how they will rule and what they would do and how they will spoil many nations. Okay, how they would, you know, destroy the animals, build, you know, towns and cities with blood, give, you know, uh, their nations bottle. His, na you know, the scriptures say, what does it say? Woe to him that giveth his neighbor a bottle, okay? Verse 15, woe to him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth his bottle to him, these different philosophies, and maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their uh, nakedness. So this is describing the Edomite, okay? Uh, the, the spoil of beast. Who's spoiling the animals in the earth? What system is causing a, a fish to jump out of the water and you know, whales beach themselves because there's not enough oxygen in the waters. Okay, that's Esau's system. Violence in the land. That's the Edomite. Idol worship. That's the Edomite. Okay, so in the third chapter, he sees the end of it all. And this is how the end of Esau's world is going to go. Okay, Habakkuk 3 and 2, O Yahweh, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Yahweh, revive thy work in the midst of the years, and in the midst of the years make known, and in wrath remember mercy. Let's read this in the NLT, see how it's worded. Come on, now they move it back down to the bottom. They just keep moving the NLT. It says, I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled in all by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, all right, which is the end, help us again as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember your mercy. And he's going to remember that mercy by the deliverance of the elect. Okay. And this is our prayer. God came from Teman, all right, the Holy One, all right, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. You see that? His glory covered the heavens. Let's look up the word glory. <clears throat> I don't think I ever checked out that uh, Hebrew word, glory. Oh, uh, Hawad. Hey, we got a, a brother, Hawad, Elder Hawad. <laughs> Beautiful. Hawad. Splendor, majesty, vigor. And that brother is very vigorous. <laughs> but as you can see, Habakkuk saw all right, the glory of the heavenly father cover the heavens. And that's through those chariots, okay? Which the main one is going to be through Yahweh Shai, right? And the earth was full of his praise. See that? So the heavenly father is going to send his only begotten son from Teman, which if you understand your history, all right, as an Israelite, all right, or if you, if you know, if you didn't know, that's how the Lord sent that angel, okay, uh, in Egypt to deliver the law, all right? This is the, the book of Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said, the Lord came from Mount Sinai, and rose up from Seir unto them. All right. That's the area and region and earth the chariots entered into. Okay. <laughs> and that just happens to be Esau's land. Okay. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Okay. Esau, Edom is tied. All right. To the coming of the Lord. Okay. In various scriptures. 
but even when the Lord sent, okay, his angel, Hamashiach Yehawashai, all right, to deliver the law and to guide the children of Israel, all right, out of Egypt and, and through the wilderness, okay, he sent him from that area of Seir, you see, Teman, which is uh, the, the, the land of Esau, you see, so the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them, and he shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints, and from his right hand went a fiery law for them. What, what is his right hand? Okay, the right hand is symbolic of Yahweh Shai. All right, the arm of the Most High God, Yahweh, his angel, his representative. See, and that's how the law was brought to us. Okay. So when the Lord sends his only begotten son, all right, to come and deliver the elect, the angels are going to come from that same area. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, all right, Selah. And Habakkuk had to be a priest. When you read, um, this is like a, a song, you know. And so you see Selah, all right, that's what, you know, uh, the priest and David, you know, would say as they were singing those psalms, man, okay? And the scriptures tell you that this chapter is to be associated with uh, uh, string instruments. Let's read this last verse. We got a storm going on out here, so you hear that rain, all right? But when you get this in the NLT... All right, this 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 particular chapter, this song. All right, this prayer is to be accompanied by stringed instruments. All right, so you you'll hear stringed instruments in the background of this video. So going back, all right, to uh, verse three, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Selah, His glory covered the heavens. And the earth was full of his praise, those chariots, and his brightness was as the light, and he had horns coming out of his hands, and there was the hiding of his power. And those horns are symbolic of that fire that's going to come down. And the, the hiding of his power is those secret chambers that the elect are going to be beamed up into, the inside of the chariot. You see that? Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. And that's the same thing Second Edges, the 13th chapter, talks about. Okay, it talks clearly about how when, 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 the, when, when that great mountain, as he described it, which was the chariot, came, fire went from before him. It was, it was basically fire coming out of those chariots to destroy. See, and there's going to be war going on at that very, very same time. Okay. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. All right. He saw nothing but fire issuing forth. He stood and measured the earth. All right. And he beheld and drove asunder the nations. Okay. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. He's like, wow. All right, let's read this in the NLT. He saw a far out vision, man. And it just so happens to j just get chaotic here, you know, on the storm. You know, as I'm reading this, you know. It says, when he stops, the earth shakes. When he looks, the nations tremble. He shatters the everlasting mountains. And the levels, all right, and levels the eternal hills. He is the eternal one. Okay, he's seeing the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man. All right, his ways are everlasting. He saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. He's seeing chaotic, a chaotic scene in the Middle East. He's seeing all manner of, of, of just hell taking place in the earth. Okay, he's seeing war. He's seeing like the, the he's seeing it all. Okay, the earth moving. Okay, because the scriptures talks about how it's going to be a great earthquake. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 24. Okay, before you devils fall. 
okay, or your devil's falls associated with a great shaking in the earth. Isaiah 24 and 18, and it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit and he that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows all right from on high are open the chariots are coming okay and the foundations of the earth do shake see that the earth is utterly broken down the earth is clean dissolved the earth is moved exceedingly the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be moved removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again meaning esau's world see and it shall come to pass in that day that yahweh shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth so you devils are going to be taken down and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days they shall be visited you see that so these devils are going to be taken down, but 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 what's going to take them down is the uh, uh, chaotic second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man. And the earth is going to move exceedingly in that day, move to and fro like a drunkard. That's that great earthquake we read about in Revelation, the 11th chapter. You see that? It says, was Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation. You see that? Riding upon his horses and his chariots of salvation via the angels. The top angel is Yahweh Shai. All right? Let's read this in the NLT. All right? It said, was it anger, Lord, that you struck the rivers and parted the sea? Were you displeased with them? No, you were sending forth your chariots of salvation. All right. Which is associated with, 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 with the earth moving to and fro in a chaos. chaos. When them chariots hit this earth, chaos is going gonna, it's gonna to be chaotic, man. See, thy bow was made quite naked according to the oath of the tribes. Even thy word, Selah, thou that is cleaved to the earth with rivers. All right, let's read this in the NLT. You brandished your bow in your quiver of er uh, in your quiver of arrows. Okay, which is the fire, man. Okay, so again, it's gonna be war going on on the earth. Fire coming from the chariots. His and his, what does the scripture say? His sword is going to be bathed in heaven. It's going to come down upon Idumia. That's Isaiah, the 34th chapter. You split open the earth with flowing rivers. All right. And there is an oath to the tribes. Okay. There is an oath that he made to the tribes that he would deliver them. Okay. And that oath was made. All right. With Abraham. Okay. Isaac and Jacob and his 12 sons. All right. The mountains saw thee and they trembled. The overflowing water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. All right. And there's thunder going on now. It's a chaotic scene outside. It's windy. <laughs> it's lightning. Hey, but I'm going to keep going, man. It's, it's hell coming down. It's crazy. <laughs> The mountains saw thee and they trembled, all right? The powers that be, okay? The powers that be, the, 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 the rulership. That's why the scriptures say in uh, 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 Revelation, the sixth chapter, when all of this is happening, Revelation, the sixth chapter, In the 14th verse, and heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That's that destruction. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. Okay. 
in the dens and rocks of the mountains. What is a den? Okay. A den. Like you got your grandma had that den. The Greek word. Strong's G 4693. Spalion. Spalion. A cave, a den. Okay. And that's those uh, uh, bunkers, man. Okay. That's those bunkers, man. All right. And they're going to be there. All right. While we're, uh, uh, you know, in the, in that chariot. Awaiting us to come down. And they're going to get judged. See. They're going to hide themselves in the dens of the rocks and the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So they're going to be scared. They're going to be scared as hell. All right? It says, the mountains saw thee, Habakkuk 3 and 10, and, and they trembled. Okay? The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. Okay? Let's read this in the uh, NLT. Okay? It says, The mountains watched and trembled. Onward swept the raging waters. The mighty deep cried out, lifting its hands to the Lord. So it's, it's, it's going to be crazy, man. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation at the light of of thine arrows they went and the shining of thy glittering spear and that's nuclear destruction taking place on the earth okay because it talks about the arrows that are going to be shot into the ends of the earth all right it's going to be arrows shot into the ends of the earth let's just get that real Second Edger 16 and 13, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Okay. And the scriptures do also talk about glittering. Okay. In the book of Job. 20 and 25, it is drawn and cometh out of thy body. Yeah, what it says before this Job 20 and 24 He shall flee from the iron weapon And the bow of steel shall strike him through It is drawn and cometh out of the body The glittering sword shall come out of his gall Terrors are upon him Okay Terrors are upon him And when that war starts You know them chariots in there and Especially when those missiles start coming towards Babylon All right he shall flee from the iron weapon. Let's look up this word iron. Barazal. Iron. A, a material, utensils, tools of iron. All right, which are th those missiles. Okay. Weapon. Nashop. Nashak. Equipment, weapons, armory, equipment, weapons. And what is that? Uh, the modern day version of that. All right, those missiles, man. And those are the Lord's missiles. He, he, he put the spirit on man to create those missiles. Okay? So it's going to be a, a, a fear. See, he's, he's witnessing a fearful vision of how this is all going to end. Again, Esdras gives you the same vision. See? Thou did march through the heathen. All right? All right? Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. So when he comes down again, we just read, he's coming to smite the heathen. Okay, again, Zechariah, the fifth chapter. <laughs> in the first verse, then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the earth. Okay, for everyone that still it shall be cut off as on this side, according to it. 
and every one that swear it shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And I will bring it forth, said the Lord, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swear it falsely by my name. Okay, the true blasphemer, Esau, Edom, and it shall remain in the, in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So this is a curse, all right, for you people, all right? Even the remnant are going to be affrighted, but at the same time, the Lord is going to transform us. And we're going to be looking down as we get on those chariots like, whoa, okay? And what we're reading about, all right, it will no longer be uh, 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 as a glass. It's looking through a, a dark uh, glass as the scriptures talks about. We won't have to know it in part. We won't have to preach or prophesy it, uh, of it as I'm doing here, as we're doing now. We're prophesying of this day, but at that point, we'll be face to face with it, <laughs> All, all of these visions that the prophet saw of us being delivered and the destruction and the war going on and Babylon being destroyed, we're going to see it face to face, man. He's going to thresh the heathen in anger. All right. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Okay. Damn, it's flooding out there. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed See that? The elect. Okay? Again, Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven, uh, heaven to the other. He's going to gather the elect when he returns. Okay? And who's going to do this? Verse 30. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay? So, and what is that for? To get the elect to go forth for the salvation of thine people. Okay? Let's NLT this thing. You went to rescue your chosen people. All right? This is in the vision. This can't be broken. Yahweh Shai told you the scripture can't be broken. All right, to save your anointed ones, all right, the two witnesses, Judah and Ephraim, the tabernacle of David, man. You crushed the heads of the wicked and stripped their bones from head to toe, all right? And, 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 and that's going to be by taking down, destroying Babylon the great, man. All right, thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Israel is going to be destroyed too. The, 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 the Amalekites who run all right, that, that state of Israel, oh, yeah. Okay, the, the Babylon and that place is going to be decimated with fire, according to the Holy Scriptures, man. You see? He's a, he's a damn demon. Okay? Thou didst strike through his staves the head of his villages. Woo! And that's Babylon. Okay? And Israel. <laughs> All right, where he, where he set up talking about he's the chosen people of the lord all right with a with, with uh with a with two curls coming down the side of his head with a hamaka on his head and all that crap thou didst strike through his staves uh the head of his villages they came out as a whirlwind to scatter me their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly all right let's uh read this in the nlt interesting scripture right um, Revelation, <laughs> Habakkuk uh, 3 and 14 in the NLT. <laughs> With his own weapons, you destroyed the chief of those who rushed out like a whirlwind, thinking Israel would be easy prey. And that's Esau, all right? Because we know in Revelation, the uh, 12th chapter, it tells you, all right, that the red dragon... The revival of Rome, Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh the elect. They're going to come after us. Okay. When the enemy, uh, Isaiah the 59th chapter. Okay. When the enemy, Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the West 
and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. You see that? When the enemy shall come in like a flood. So Habakkuk saw them coming to try to destroy the elect. And, be, and, and, and what happened? All right. Uh, what's what's going to be the end result of that? Revelation 20. Okay. The, the tail end of the, the, the Satan. Okay. Being loosed out of his prison. What is he going to do at the tail end when, it, when, it, when he sees it's over for him? Revelation 20 and 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Okay, so the, before we get beamed up, all right, uh, shh, hey, who knows, according to this, we're going to be in a tight situation. Just like in Egypt, all right, the Lord told the Israelites, stand right here, all right, and as Pharaoh chases you, okay, the, the, I'm going to work the miracle, stand right here. So the Israelites were out of, the, when we got delivered out of that first Egypt, it was like a, you know, uh, scarcely, the scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. You see? Now, who's to say some some will be in an okay situation? Who, who, who knows? But we know he's going to come after the elect because he knows, all right, that their power is, is the reason all of these things are happening and why his plan is failing. Okay? Back to Habakkuk. So, with his own weapons, with his own spear, you pierced his head. That's the war that's going to be taken on on the planet Earth, that glittering spear. When his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding. Woo! So we are going to be in hiding during all of this. The Lord is going to have the elect in a particular uh, uh parts of the earth you know the uh, height in, in hiding while all of this 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 hell is taking place the haragma is going to be instituted you know at that time certain of us are going to be you know uh uh put to death but there's going to come a point where the lord is going to lift up a standard he ain't going to be able to kill us all you see that according to what we're reading all right he, he he's going to have the technology Okay, to find wherever the saints are, like he's gonna have art of AI, be able to being able to try to track the, the who's saying the name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Watch. All right, but the, but 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 hey, the Lord, as He's sustaining us in those situations, Esau's gonna come and then a. Uh, hey, all right, off he's gonna he's gonna destroy your ugly ass, and you Edomites are god ugly. Okay, the, you, you're awful people. You're, you're, you're a plague and cancer in the earth. That's why the Lord got to do all of this. Okay, you ain't no regular demon. This type of destruction has to happen in order for you to be taken down. Habakkuk 3 and 15. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, the people. The horses is the chariots. The sea is the people. Okay, through the heap of great waters. And the great waters represent these people. As a matter of fact. Didn't it say the enemies would come like a flood? Did not the Roman military? Doesn't it talk about how they came like a flood? Okay. Uh, let's see here. I know it's in the Psalms. Psalms 32 and 6. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in the time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him in the elect. Let's see here. Psalms 93 and 3. The floods have lifted up, O Yahweh. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lifted up their waves. All right. So th 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 is a flood talking? No, this is speaking to nations of people. Okay. A nation of people on the earth. Yahweh on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. See, the people, okay? The waves of the sea represent the people. As a matter of fact, Revelation 17, 
as a vision was being broken down. Let's see here. Let's see here. Waters. Yep, Revelation 17 and 15. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. So waters, okay, as we're reading about here, yeah, uh, the, the, the angels, you know, Yahweh Shai, all right, walking through the waters, all right, in the sea, okay, is symbolic of him taking down the heathen too, all right, and destroying their military, you know, their, their, their onslaught. And everything they got going, all right? Because the scriptures talks about that. As birds flying, so will the Lord deliver his his chosen. It says, you trampled the sea with your horses and the mighty waters piled high, okay? And it's literally going to be floods on the earth, okay? But that's also speaking of the people, okay? Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. The Lord is going to take all of you heathen down. Again, that's why Herod wanted to, to, to cut that sacrifice off because he knew that that child was going to be the one to rule all nations with a rod of iron. It says that. When I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice, all right, as he's seeing this vision. Okay, rottenness entered into my bones, okay, and trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble when he cometh up unto the people, when he will invade them with his troops. Woo, the angels. And this is proof. Habakkuk is here. Habakkuk is going to be here. He's here in this time. If this is the end, which we believe through faith, according to the signs, Habakkuk is here. How is it, why, why would he need rest in the day of trouble? You see? Why? Why would he need rest in the day of trouble? God damn, it's raining. Why would he need rest in the day of trouble? Because he's here. Okay? How about that? Even when he talked about uh, them coming after the elect. Let's read it again. In verse 14, thou didst strike through the staves, the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. So he he's there. And it's speaking of the elect. Their rejoicing was to, vo to devour the poor secretly. That's what they've been wanting to do. And when it's all said and done, they, hey, they're going to try to do it. They're going to try to go all out and use their technology to cut off all the Israelites, anybody praising the Lord. So as he's seeing his vision, his belly tr uh, uh, trembled. All right. These are the days that are coming to the earth. Okay. It's flooding. Damn. This is crazy. It says... When I heard and my belly trembled, my lips quivered. Now the sun coming out. This is wild. This is a wild uh, uh, scene, man. Whew. As a matter of fact, I'm for the open. I'm going to open my phone and record that. That is wild. That is beautiful, though, too. The sun came out. Stop raining, but it's flooding. Like it's literally flooding out here. <sighs> but anyway, so lucky. I'm just at all with the Lord, man. <laughs> it's like the sun. It's like it's it's storming. You know, hailing. All right, and it starts flooding. And the streets are flooded, right? I'm looking out my window, and then the sun comes out. 
and then the, the rain kind of like subsides. It's beautiful, man. Anyway, Salakia, Habakkuk 3 and 16. When I heard my belly trembled and my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered and put to my bones, and I trembled in myself that I may rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh unto the people, he will invade them with, with his troops. So, NLT in that, I trembled inside when I heard this. My lips quivered with fear. My legs gave way beneath me. I shook in terror. I will wait quietly for the coming day when disaster will strike the people who invade us. All right. And the prophets of old have been raised up. All of these prophets we're reading, they're here to be delivered. That's why the scripture says what? When Babylon the Great is destroyed. Okay, this is the time of the reward. All right, Revela uh, Revelation, the uh, 18th chapter and the 20th verse. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. You see that? So when Babylon falls, the holy apostles and prophets Okay, the prophets will be raised up in Babylon pursuing the Jeremiah, the 29th chapter before the throne of David was established. Okay, so Habakkuk is here. Esdras is here. Jeremiah is here. Okay. The very men that were uh, uh, helping to build the, 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 the temple, they're here. The leadership, the, the, the men of the Lord are back. You know, although the fig tree. Okay, then we read this in the NLT. In King James, he will obey the word of truth when it comes to the people. Yep, New King James uh, or the NIV. I heard in my heart pounding, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity. To come on the uh, on the nation invading us, which is the Edomites. That's why we got to cry unto the Lord, man. All right. When I heard my body tremble, my lips quiver. So he he's like, whoa, shit. And I tremble in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. That's those chariots, man. Okay. That's our defense. Again, Isaiah. All right, chapter, uh, let's get it real quick. Isaiah 35 or th 31, rather. Isaiah 31 and 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses flesh and not spirit. When Yahweh shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is helping or that that is hoping shall fall down, and they shall fail together. So Esau and all of his, his the nations and his helpers, his military, they're all gonna fall when the Lord sends his only begotten son back. Okay. Verse 5, as birds flying, so will Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it and passing over, he will preserve it. The second Passover out of the land of, nor of the north. Okay, North America, Babylon the Great. All right, here in the northwestern hemisphere, where the majority of the tribes are here. Okay, and he's also going to gather all of the, 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 the scattered Israelites from the four corners of the earth. Okay, that's the second Passover. Turn ye unto him whom ye have, the children of Israel have deeply revolted. Okay, this is the message. Habakkuk 3 and 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive sh uh, shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. There's going to be hard times in the earth. Okay, this is what he saw. Okay, you rest assured these days are coming. All right, but the Lord has already set provision 
all right, that even without this system flourishing and, and going forth in the way that we were used to getting our food cut off, all right, farming and everything else, stores, all right, and you're going to have to to bow to this devil in order for you to um, eat, all right, sell, all right, have any form of a normal life. You're going to have to bow to the system, and then we're going to need the Lord, Okay? So though you have this, you know, crazy situation on the earth, yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Okay? <laughs> the Lord God is my strength. All right? See, we're going to be rejoicing in that time. The scriptures say the servants of the Lord are going to eat. How do you think we're going to be alive at the point where he comes to try to you know, fully just destroy us. We're going to be have to have eight and drunk. How are there going to be pregnant women? Which uh, Jeremiah, the 31st chapter talks about women being saved in childbearing. How, how are the elect going to be alive for the chariot to deliver them up? Although we know some are going to be raised from the dead and delivered up as well. And as well as meeting those who are on the chariots already. All right. The scriptures talks about that. <laughs> it's the, 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 the return of the Lord. Oh, my goodness, man. And you you hear you people hear these things and you think, oh, that's far fetched. But the return of the Lord himself, itself is is, is it, that in itself. <sighs> so there should be nothing in your mind that you say the Lord can't do. <laughs> so we're going to be rejoicing in the Lord, man. While all of this hell is taking place. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. Okay. He will make me to walk upon mine high places. The, uh, to the chief singer. On my string instruments. Okay. And when you deal with a hinds feet. All right. Because a, a hind is like a deer. Okay. But that's also speaking of like. You know, uh, uh, those those goats. As a matter of fact, let's get a, a, an example of it. All right. Let's see if we can just look it up and then we'll we'll, we'll close out. Give me one second. This damn computer boy. Satan been on this computer since the day it came out of the box. I should have. <laughs> I should have. Uh, took it back, but hey. You know, we all got our hell. Um, what am I looking up? Okay. Goat Mountains. Goat on Mountain Wall. Let's see. Give me one second. That's the National Geographic, so I don't want to click that. But, I, I mean, I think I've played some National Geographic. But you can see. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, he's just standing right there. He's good. Uh, Ibex. You know, that's all in that same family. Look at that. Like, so in a, in a crazy situation, you're going to be good. Let's get another example. A more... Yeah, this is, I'll do this one. Minerals rich in the calcium that these animals need to stay strong. And they'll scale a dam to get them. So there's minerals that they need to live, all right, but the minerals are all the way 
up in these mountains and they have to get up there. Check this out. In a situation of extreme, we call it such rapidity, the possibility of the car to fall is a temptation for many. Without these salts and minerals, their bones won't grow, their nervous systems and muscles can't function. So they need it. Movement and coordination can falter. I have a lot of fear when I'm in very situations very rapid and I'm looking at the bottom. I'm not certainly a stand-back. Right. When we, when we think of something steep, that's like dangerous to us. But to this thing, look. There's a strong bond between mother and kid. And the kid will follow her wherever she goes. Look at that. So you hate when you try to look at animals, then Esau just pops. I don't want to see Esau. But look at this. Look. Look at that. If we were on, you you'd be sliding down your Nike. The, the, the damn sole would come off the Nike. You'd be through. But not the Ibex. That damn computer, hold up. Look at that. Come on, man. Just to get that mineral. Look at that. The Ibex eventually make it to the prize. Salt from the earth, dissolved in water, continues on its journey into their bodies. So, like, even there's one where, you know, when animals try to attack these particular uh these particular uh types of mountain goats in particular like deers and you know they're able to stand in positions that are very very difficult for the other animals to to to, to mess with how can it avoid predators Look These at that. goats appear to have discovered a way out by going to the mountains. Meet the alpine ibex, a beautiful goat with large horns. It lives at altitudes ranging from 1,000 meters to 4,500 meters above sea level. And this is the natural habitat of all ibexes. Few predators would consider climbing in these harsh regions, where there are only rocks around, and where the path is the width of a matchbox. And they can also climb well. The grizzly's only chance is to drive the goats into a trap. So basically, all right, and yeah, the the deer and the goat aren't in the same family, but it's the same concept, all right. He's gonna make his feet like hinds feet, okay? Like 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 we're gonna be swift. The, the Lord is gonna put us in. Uh, he's gonna put the spirit on us. Okay, he he's our strength. He's going to and when we're in that position of where it looks impossible, we're going to be good. All right, he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments, okay? And let's read this in the NLT and close it out. It says, "The sovereign Lord is my strength." He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights, all right, in the mountains. 
See that? For the choir director, this prayer is to be accompanied by string instruments. All right, so this concludes the lesson. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, Bashim Rachach and double honors to the apostles, the elders, the bishops at Great Millstone who rule well. All right, and it's no longer raining. All right, the, 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 the storm is gone. <laughs> the flood is subsiding. All right, and uh, it's like the sun is out. Heavy. Shalom. Giving all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Shalom.